some of you I recognize from having seen you just about an hour ago. <laughs> and uh, appreciate, appreciate you being here. Uh, we're going to do our annual meeting, and it's going to be in really about three pieces. I'm going to do a kind of a, our standard report with input from George and Marty and Don. And then the uh, an opportunity for you all to have a dialogue with us and we can discuss things. And then Kathy is going to talk about our big project, which is which we've been trying to get complete. It's, it's coming along and we're getting closer every day. But anyway, thank you for coming and let me start this program. All right, this is what we're going to cover the first of the second. I've got a few opening comments. Uh, as you know, we just had uh, an election of our board of directors for the next, next couple of years, and we'll report on that. Don is going to report about what we're doing in, in the uh, financially, and George has a report about Living.com, a uh, continually very popular part of the club, a uh, review of the club information, some of the accomplishments that we had in the, in the last year and uh, open up for discussion, so we'll get started. First off, we don't have everybody in the, dis in the discussion group, but we do have a goodly number. Uh, it is very active, and you'll see some data later, but I think it's one of the most effective tools that we have because it enables the snowbirds to be participating in the club activities even when they're in the colder northern regions. And apparently tonight is going to be some of your weather broke down to us, 47 overnight hours. But uh, it's a great, great organization. These are our officers, directors, and I, we had, had a uh, vacancy which we will fill later on today. Part of the success is our Wednesday meetings. I don't know of any other club that meets every Wednesday. Uh, most of the clubs that I know of here in Florida meet once a month, uh, once every two months. And I think the reason that we're successful is that we have a regular schedule and we have something going on every week. And usually uh, people who, who are here learn one, two, or three things that they didn't know when they come to me. So they're very good. And I want to thank all the people who sit up here and lead the, those meetings. And I've named the ones that I remember from last year. <clears throat> we had a very successful class program last year. It wouldn't have worked without Eckhart, with his human work and his credits from, and the people I've named who were the instructors. <coughs> So as I say, thank you very much for all that you contributed to the club. Now, Marty uh, asked to report on our election results. Uh, we had, uh, we had, uh, sorry, I'll just come over here. Uh, we had um, uh, three people elected, uh, actually four, four people elected to the new terms. Um, Jim uh, Corsica, uh, oh, got his hand up uh, for the term ending next January. Uh, Jeff Bohr, uh, who's uh, will be on a two-year cycle, and then um, uh, myself and Don Peacock. Don has agreed to stay on for another three-year term, and um, uh, I was roped into staying on for for the next term. Um, of uh, our 380, 367 eligible voters, we had 169 who voted. Uh, there were three. Uh, uh, submissions that didn't indicate a vote, so that's what the three is. Uh, people had to indicate yes, no, or um, uh, approve some language like that. And some of them just came back with no, with no response. Uh, so the new board, um, uh, Jerry says, at least until the next board meeting. Um, Jerry King, uh, Don is the treasurer, uh, Eckert and Jim are directors, and Jeff are directors. I'm your secretary, and George is our vice president. Thank you, Mark. Any questions? 
And this is the letter that will be in it that, that Marty created, which will be in our in our records. Don Peacock is going to do our church for I got him a place uh, of Oh, thanks. This little button right there. Uh, okay, so the cash flow, we'll explain later why we had such a negative cash flow, but you look, we only took in less than 14000 and we spent almost twenty two. and Kathy will explain that, that later. But we had the highest dues that we've ever had last year, partly due to our dues increase in July. Uh, this year I expect the dues will be maybe over 10000 this year. Class income was, I think that was also the highest that we ever had last year. This year it would be greater. Uh, we had $5 interest on our savings account from Wells Fargo. They were kind enough to give us 45 cents a month or whatever. Uh, so, and then we spent, again, the large part of this operation is on web services. We always give to the library and to Hodges. That's the $3,000 classes expense. Last year we had to pay $100 a day for class expense. So that was 1000 out of this. And the other was miscellaneous. Uh, we give a tremendous amount of pay to the instructors, $60 per session, of which they've spent probably 20 hours of time in preparing. But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a big pay. Uh, insurance, when we, a couple of years ago, when we had a, uh, a professional audit done, the auditor recommended that we should have director and officer insurance. We never had it. So if somebody wants to sue us, what, go ahead, we have insurance. <laughs> <laughs> and partly of this was errors and omissions insurance again. <coughs> If Jerry said something, you wrote it down, you came home and you're running a business and your computer crashed and you sue us, well, at least we're covered for that now for another few months. We dropped that. Uh, we couldn't see a need for that. But anyway, an annual report is 70 bucks. Well, that's an every year thing. So this is the breakdown of our, the biggest thing was the web services. Linda.com, again, is 1750 for the, uh, and George will report on that. The rest, the fees are pretty much the same every year. You can see what they are. And there's our class income. Uh, always the iOS and the, uh, and the Mac OS classes are <coughs> best attended. Because, well, they're two, two sessions each. So those are our big money makers. As was today, for those of you who are not here, we have an overflow crowd today. Uh, so that, that's, that's it, and here is explaining, I can't, iBank does not let me change the uh, column with, anyway, this is Friends of the Library, we gave 2,000, and Hodges, we gave 1,000. I think this year, that we may be getting comped on the rooms at Hodges, so instead of paying them $50 a day, we're gonna increase our donation this year to Hodges. And we okay. get, they, they were, they started off by asking $300 right. a, a day. And then we looked into moving. And uh, mm -hmm. we called in the enforcement, the enforcement <laughs> George talked to some of the people and we now have it for a greatly reduced rate. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> so I just wait. That's, uh, that's odd. But we don't know that. We don't really have a, anyway. So that, that's our expenses. So here was our, we estimate for this year, uh, I think that 9,500 dues is conservative. The classes will be more because we raised the price. Uh, we did, we're not buying a new computer. This one is only two years old. Uh, we don't need a new one. Uh, what about Jerry's new car? Uh, Jerry's new car. My, no, car, my, car is only, my car's only 15 years old. I don't need a new one yet. <laughs> So again, the largest expense uh, 
this year we expect for the web services, but that will not be a continuing expense, but until we get it set up, uh, Kathy will talk, talk about that, but we don't expect that to be a continuing large expense. It will be an expense of some sort. Linda, we're going to renew it again this year. Meeting room fees, these are all the same. Insurance will be a little less. We're dropping that one policy. That's the only, that's it. And here's our expenses for classes. The, uh, we put 500 and perhaps we pay that, perhaps not. But the Hodges insisted that we have liability insurance in case somebody goes to class and falls down and wants to sue them or whatever. We had to have insurance for while we're on the campus there at Hodges. So that's a new expense this year. <coughs> Uh, so that's, and again, we get, oh here, remember when we put in the, uh, the cabling for the projector and we put in new routers so the instructor has a separate private uh, internet connection and you, everyone else has that chat small, well it's, the speed is greatly improved and the capacity of the number of users, because sometimes we've had almost 100 people in here and everybody's got their phone on and their iPad, but now the system handles all that. Uh, so I, we paid for that, but it was three years ago. And now the license for renewing the license for their two routers is coming due, and we are going to give the library enough money to renew the licenses on these three routers for another three years. Okay, so that's it. Any questions for that? Question. Who makes up the shortfall? We've had a, a surplus, and I always used to ask Georgia and Jerry, why do we have a surplus? Why don't we give some more money away or something? But fortunately, we had enough surplus, although we have I took over as treasurer six years ago, and we have $3,000 less than we had then. So we had a couple of years with surplus, and the last two years we've had a drain, but we still have surplus, fortunately. But we've raised the dues and the class fee, so we don't operate in the hole. Okay. But oh, yes. this is a great deal. We will never find another place where, where we can pay. What, what is the to the library, $300 a year for a meeting 10 months a year here. We, if we have to move somewhere, that's really the reason we maintain the surplus. And Hodges, if they were going to pay the charges the 300 a time, uh, that we averaged 40 people, you know, we just couldn't do it. And there's not another space that has what we need, a projector, uh, seats with a desk. I mean, the library said, well, they could take us, but if you sit here, you wouldn't be able to take notes. It's just, you know, these are two ideal places, and that's another reason we give money to both. Sir? Do you think it would be fair to give the lecturers for the classes more money for all the work they do? I've asked for that every year, and Jerry said, no, no, no. That's <laughs> so, I, I don't know. I, 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 I did get it. When I took over, they were getting $50. So I got the <laughs> oh, wow. I got that 20% raise, and that was the best I could do. They were <laughs> the easy. They all say, no, we get enough. I, I, I don't know, believe so. it on them away. <coughs> God bless them. They, I, I think there's two things to it. One is we're, we're a 501c, so there's some restrictions relative to compensation. But the more important is if, if, if it moved above what I what, what is it, a, an honorarium token, uh, you couldn't afford to pay for George or, or me or, or Eckhart where, where it would be compensation that, that we could go out and buy our cars. So I think I think we're, we're there. The people who show up on our video, we, we give them an honorarium, a, a jar of M&M &M candy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's a tough situation, but so far the board has voted to stay at, at a nominal number, which we, which we use. All right. But the 10 months of here, 10 months in the library, there's no pay to anybody unless we have a guest lecturer. But Jerry and George do not get any pay for driving here from North Naples 10 months a year. So we're, we're sort of struggling, but now with the price of gas at $2. <laughs> 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 
Well, next time we'll see. Thank you. Education. 
They don't have eye bank, unfortunately. That's why you don't see my name on the list. <laughs> you know, that's interesting. Um, and I'll suggest that. No, if you have a course that you want to take and they don't have it, I'll suggest it. Um, they've improved, I think, over the years as far as we're concerned, because they used to be lagging behind as far as uh, a Mac related software <coughs> and operating systems and so forth. But now they're right, they're right in there. I mean, if the operating, uh, they'll come out with the class the same week the operating system comes out, or the same week the software shows up. Um, that's about it for Linda. Any questions? Where are they located? In California, Northern California. And they're owned today by what? Link, Linkan? Linkan. 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 Right. They were just bought out. Question? Yes. Um, when you get accepted to the week at Linda.com, did you have the password in the acceptance email? Yes. What you do, what you, the first thing, when you join the club, when anybody joins the club, or when we first started out, uh, I had, I triggered a letter from Linda to every member that was an existing member of the group at the time, it was about six, seven years ago. And then every member that comes in, at, uh, since then, we have sent, I have triggered a letter that can come to you from Linda to register. To register for Linda.com. And once you register, uh, and, and I give you a week, um, I notify Linda, and they notify you the day that the week starts. And with your, uh, your you know, your user ID and password and whatever. Oh, so say they, they supply it? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. And it, it, the week starts on Thursday? Yeah, all the weeks, we just happen to work it out that way. The weeks all start on Thursday and then uh, the following Wednesday night. Um, because we only have 50 people taking advantage of it, I allow people to sign up for as, as many weeks as they want. But those that really utilize the heck out of it, every once in a while I'll take a week away if somebody new comes in and wants to. I think an important part of Linda, two things. First, is that you don't have to be here in Southwest Florida. All you need is an internet connection. For so, so for our members who have two residences, they, you can use Linda no matter where you are as long as you have uh, internet access. And I think the other one is uh, how long you use Linda during that week is a function of your stamina. I mean, literally, if, if you go into binge learning, you could probably spend 24 hours a day, five, five or six days in a row, learning. Because it's, it is, it's already paid for. It's just a streaming system, and it's a wonderful education. Some of the best instructors in the world. When we first started with Linda, a couple of our very savvy uh, people in the technology end of the business, uh, we're using, like like Jeremy said, 24 hours a day, and I figured that something's wrong. And then what they were doing was recording, recording Linda. <laughs> <laughs> and we sent out a note. We sent out a notice to to, uh, to the group saying that, that I mean that it's absolutely positively positively illegal. Now what's interesting though is if you sign in on your iPad to lynda.com, they allow you to um, save the class. You can save, you can make, you, you can record it and watch it at a later time on a mobile device. But they, I think they limit it to like two weeks or whatever. So they're very flexible. They're very flexible. And, and we, we very seldom ever have any technical problems. So, I mean, you really can use, I mean, it's, it's your convenience, and it's really just a great, uh, a great uh, thing we do for our, our people. And, uh, and there's only about three MAC groups in the country that are utilizing it. Now, they're very, they're being very aggressive right now. A lot of the libraries uh, are joining up with Linda now.
It was Collier County Library has not, but I have heard of some of the other libraries in Florida and around the country that have. Do they have a list of all the programs? Yes. And I'm going to show you a video, if we have time tonight, about, about that. And uh, the, you, can go, you can go to Linda at any time to see all the classes that are available. You don't, you don't, have, to, you don't have to wait till the week. You can go to Linda.com and find out all the different class topics that are available. Yeah, and you, uh, and you can even watch some of the uh, tutorials on some of the classes. There's always maybe 10% of them are free, so you can get a feel for it. So when you get ready to take take your week, you're prepared. You know exactly what you want to do, and you don't have to do go through the hunting the hunting process. You're all set. I would like to give a testimonial. <laughs> I'm number nine on that list. Last year I was number two, and so I cut back a little bit. I didn't want to hawk the whole thing, but. <laughs> When I leave here, I'm in a very rural area. I'm an hour and a half away from an Apple store. So to me, it's a great deal. It's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for us all. But I just want to say thank you very much because I've really enjoyed it for six years. And I hope he doesn't cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say. Very good, thank you. You get points uh, for that. <laughs> I want, I want to mention that sometime this week, hopefully tomorrow, uh, this presentation will be on, the, on our website and I will send out a link through the discussion group to let you know how you, you can look at it again since it's, I mean, we're going to give you a test on this next week. <laughs> I want to now just talk about some stuff. This is, I want to talk about the, the club stuff and I don't remember exactly when Apple uh, opened their stores here, but it was before 2009. And our, the club membership was declining. We were, uh, in 2009 we had, uh, in January we had 332, by the year end we were down to 292 and the trend was going down. And we were doing lots of things to try to uh, raise, awareness of the club. Uh, Apple would not let us put anything in their stores telling them about the, the club. Uh, George, for one, would put posters up in Panera's and they told him that they, they liked his money but not his posters. Uh, we made up business cards so that we could uh, give them to people who, uh, that we would be talking to about. But the, the club didn't change much in trajectory. But we did have a meeting, we got started, and this is what has happened. We are now running around 500, around 500 members, and that looks that looks good. I mean, it's a solid club, a lot of a lot of people in there. But when you dig down into it, we had in 2015, we had 40 new individuals and 24 new house uh, memberships which means we had an addition of 88 people from the year prior. However, we also lost 128. Some died, some moved away, some said it wasn't for them. So the club is very dynamic. We've got a lot of churn into it. So you speaking to your friends and associates who are thinking about Mac, thinking about my OS, are the ones who help get this club to be where we are today and enable us to have all these programs going for it. And we're at, right now, we're, we're as of the end of uh, December, we were 492. We got two new members came in so far this month, but unfortunately, uh, for people who didn't pay their dues, we will be dropping nine by the end of this month. So that's the type of the dynamics. I re reviewed last year's club uh, training. We had eight different courses, two of which were uh, two session courses. And you can see, I, I talk student days. Today we had 51, 52 people. That's 52 student days. 
next week we'll have 51, 52 people. Now they got 102 student days for the old cap session. In 2015, we basically we averaged 44 people per session for 441 uh, student days. 25 percent of those who uh, of all the members attended the class. That's that's a pretty good penetration for, for a group that is this size. And what I particularly like is that of those who attended, 27% were new members. So we are, we are meeting the goal of educating people who are new to the club and probably new to the Mac and new to the to the iPad. And we had some great instructors that I used here. We started our classes today uh, with, and if you see what we have here, we got El Capitan, we've got cloud storage, we've got information resources, we've got two sessions on iOS 9, George is going to do photos, Marilyn Bunn Sagan, who's recovering from knee surgery, is going to teach two classes on applications, and I'm going to do a security thing. We uh, probably, we had 54 in gold, but we ended up with some last minute cancellations. But, uh, this is a great program, and we have great instructors, and we couldn't afford to pay them what it's worth. This is some more detail on the classes that took place last year. I want to switch to the discussion group. It's a member-only email-based system, and, and I made it member-only so that uh, we wouldn't get into the... When, when you get into internet-based discussion, there's always a problem of, of your email address getting stolen and spam coming from all over the world because they know that you're interested in computers. So the only people who can be in this discussion group are those who are members of the club. And when you membership expires, you get kicked out of the discussion group. So uh, it's, a, it's a major way that we reach out. George wants to make an announcement. I want to make an announcement. One email to the discussion group reaches out and gets to a lot of the members. It doesn't get to all of them. But the alternative, like when I announce classes, it's my responsibility and my, my challenge is to send a message, an individual message, to every one of the 500 people that are members. And that, instead of taking one second, it might take me 20 minutes or 30 minutes. So it's, we're, we're trying to move, we're, we're, we're trying to encourage more people to be part of the discussion group because that makes it easier for us to reach out to them. <clears throat> now, it's a, it's a very active group. And you can see down here at the bottom, we, we, there are about 200 messages a, a month that go through the system. And probably 8% of them are good, 10% are noise. But on the other hand, it's if, if you are out here and you've got a question, it's a lot easier than driving an hour and a half to the Apple store. So it's, it's a great service and one that uh, that we've been using for well, 12 years ago is when I started. And this is the information how to, how to join it. And if you use this path to do it, please put your name in the message that you send. I get, I get, I, I, get a, I would like to join the discussion group. I have to check whether or not you're a member. I've been, in, I've been using a Mac for 10 years. You never say your name. <laughs> and I don't know who the hell is a person asking to join. So if you do go through the, the joining group, please include your name into the thing. I, I work very hard to keep us protected from the outside world. This is our current website, and we've got a, a membership tab where people can download a, a, a membership application. We've got a, a roster of all the articles that I've written. We've got links to class information. Uh, when we have Monday meetings, like Jeff has presented many times, 
or when we have a Wednesday presentation, we put links in there. Uh, George records a lot of beans, and those videos are available. There's an index, you can go to it, and you can go back probably three years to find uh, any of the video meetings. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great site, go to it. Don mentioned this, but I just want to bring it back up. We have, we, when I joined the club, there was no internet in this, in this facility. And there was, nobody used internet. Uh, Duke Vancey, who was president, said, I don't want to talk about internet because I don't think it's going to last. <laughs> well, obviously he's wrong. So the, the library did put in Wi-Fi, and we've been using it. And a couple of years ago, George got a lot of great video conference sessions going, and they would we'd be in the middle of the meeting, and they would stop. Well, the issue was, as Don mentioned, we'd have 50, 100 people in there. Everyone had at least one iDevice, their, their iPhone or their iPad or their computer, and they were logged into the, into the Wi-Fi at the same time George was trying to conduct a, uh, a video conference with, with a presenter. There was too many people sharing the thing. So we donated enough money to Collier County Library for them to install two routers in this room just for us. Anybody that comes into the room can use it, but it was, we did. And they put up two networks, one which is a general one which everybody in the room can use, and one which the presenter is, is access to. And that has really changed the characteristic and the, and the ability of our marketing company. The other thing that we did recently, this projector is relatively new. It used to be a BGA uh, only projector. And the, a lot of our material it involves photography or movies uh, that are there. And the quality of the image, and the quality of the color was not very good. Bob Kennedy, who most of you know, would present and he would bring in his own projection because the color of his photographs were not rendering onto the screen anywhere close to what he was trying to demonstrate. Well, the library did buy a replacement projector, but they had no way for us to connect to it. It's HDMI, and HDMI is limited to about, I think about nine meters uh, between your, your source and, and destination. Well, to, to get from here to there, it turns out we've got about a 15-foot cable over to the wall. There's about 80 foot of cable from there to the equipment room. There's a switcher back there that goes between four or five different video sources. And then there's another 80 foot cable back to here. Well, we bought the, paid for the cabling and we paid for the communication devices that convert HDMI to something that can, that can drive those long distances and feed it back to them. So we paid for that and it's worked out very well for us, almost all the time. I'm going to briefly talk about this. This is, this is where we've been investing money for two years now. Right now, when we get a new member, they fill out that application form. It goes to Don, Don keys it into a computer. He sends me an email with the information. I take that information and transfer it into a database system. I generate an email, welcome the person to the club. I send out information to the, to the officers about the new members so that George can invite them to to join Linda, uh, I have to send an invitation to uh, join the uh, discussion group. Same thing goes on when we have classes. There's a lot of manual work in our current system. And we're trying to develop a way so that 
Think about magazine subscriptions. The magazine sends you out a notice if your, if your magazine is coming up for renewal. If you drop that date, you go to the website, you confirm any address changes, you confirm that you want to renew, you click on a button, you give them your credit card, and it's done. And the magazine company knows who you are. We want to do something like that for us so that George, myself, Edgar, Don, uh, and others don't have to have so much manual work. Class registration is labor intensive. We had 50 people today. We had 15 people at one point on the wait list, almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so Eckhart was having to say, okay, if you're not going to be there, let us know so we can invite somebody off the wait list to come in. We're trying to automate that. And George's work with Luda.com, we would like to do that. So we've been investing some of that surplus reserves to cover that. And we're going to, Kathy is going to give us more about that matter. something called an Apple TV. We have tried many times to have an Apple TV here to get to there to show you here. The one time we did an Apple TV demo, Jim carried in his TV set, put it up here. But we can't do that. I mean, that's that's ridiculous. And, and, and it was, I mean, it was a big one, but it, wasn't as big as this. Well, we've not been able to make it work so far. Apple came out with a new Apple TV, and Wednesday Jim and I are going to try it again. And hopefully we will get to a point where we can show you all the beauty and complexity and capability and how to use Apple TV through the projector. For those of you who have been here for uh, one of the iOS means, you, you know that we are able to show the iPad or the iPhone on the screen. That's because we are mirroring from that device into here and then projecting it. The Apple Watch does not have that capability. Hopefully, Apple will upgrade and make the watch available when it comes out in the new one. At that point, we'll, do, we'll switch. So this, those are our wish lists. Now, can I ask one question? Yeah. Can you go back to the club information screen a minute? I hope so. <laughs> Which one? Uh, members. <coughs> Will you show 09 through 15? Yeah. They're working. If you notice on that, let me go back to it. Okay. If you noticed on that in, in 2009, <coughs> or 2009 year ending, we had 292 members. In 2010, we had 426. Jerry neglected to tell you that it was because of his newspaper article that appeared in the Naples Daily News that uh, caused that increase in membership. I mean, it was the most on board. I mean, we, I, I think we had 100 people at the door uh, following his first release of that newspaper. So I think we ought to know.
<laughs> well, I do, I do get a lot of uh, emails from people whose language I have no idea what it is. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, I, and I assume that it's polite stuff. And you just on television. Uh, yes, I was. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I was on television. But only the only reason I was on television was because I I've been a victim of a den of the death twice. Wait till you see what happens now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, George, you want to tell tell us about the uh, February twenty fourth meeting? Yeah, I just want to. Uh, let me use your computer a second. Okay. On February twenty fourth. We have, I can't remember where I found it. I'm always searching the world for ideas for meetings. And uh, I came across a, an article I read about a guy that um, started a Apple pop-up museum in Roseville, Georgia. And um, I Googled and researched and everything, and I found out how to reach him. And I reached out to him and I said, let's figure out a way that we can expose your museum to our uh, Mac user group. And, uh, and, and we figured it out. And uh, it's going to happen on uh, February the 24th. The meeting will be an hour, an extra hour long. Starting an hour earlier. Starting an hour earlier, instead of 11.30. We're going to start at 10.30 on the 24th. And I just wanted to show you a, um, uh, a video about this guy. Why is that over now? I used to be teased for being a nerd. Now I definitely view it as a compliment. If I use one of my old computers that still run, I can't even explain the emotion that I'm feeling. It's more than reminiscing. It's a very strong memory retrieval. I never threw away any of the computers I had. And it, it ended up becoming a collection without consciously collecting them. You wake up one day and you've got 15 of these things in the basement or your bedroom or whatever. It just hit me that these were important devices and that this was the beginning of a whole change in society. The first one he was telling me about his collection I thought, yeah, he's, he's a collector. But then when I saw it... <laughs> Old computers are fascinating because there is so much variation. In the early days, there wasn't a common platform. Uh, it was kind of like beta and VHS, but on steroids. And they just made things a lot more interesting. The collection at this point in time, it's very hard to say what it would be worth, but um, I mean, it would have to be over a million dollars. I probably have that in it, you know, maybe even more. None of my three sons are collectors. They must have gotten their mother's genes in that regard. I think within one family, um, I may be enough of that. What does your family think about your obsession? Um, well, the nice word is eccentric. <laughs> We've created an apple pop-up exhibit at King's Market Shopping Center in a former CompUSA building. If there was such a thing as an inanimate object having a personality and having charisma, then apple is off the chart. Let's show them where it came from, because the history is going to be important. At some point, we would look back and go, well, why did we say that? Where can I get one of those? Anything that is in the collection, no matter how primitive, to a previous generation, it, it would be magic. I can't wait to see the end result. It's going to take a couple years, 
It has taken Benny to get to where he is now, and um, I just can't wait to see the, the end result. It's never complete. A uh, collection, you know, a collection is never complete. The universe of computers is big enough that I don't, I don't see it ever being, being finished. My goal now is to have a museum that will outlast me. You know, that will be more of a legacy. Don't forget that meeting on the 24th of February. I think it'll be a real highlight for us.
being the interface that you will see is based on WordPress. And the back end, which is the member data management, we're using City CRM, which is a, uh, a I want to say crowdsourced. Contact resource management and it's open source. Open, open resource, okay. And uh, it's widely used by nonprofits, widely, widely used by nonprofits. So those are the things that we're, that we're using on the server that we're also contracting. The schedule, we've been running duplicate maintenance since May, since early May. We had the databases transferred over to the server, and we've been doing uh, testing just with the board throughout the summer, and then we opened it up for limited beta tests. So we ran into some problems, So, but that's the point of a beta test, is you want to shake it down that way. So we tried the scheduling, as I mentioned, the scheduling for classes, uh, member sign-up we've tried, member maintenance we've tried, and um, all has been going, look at me. Yeah, I saw that twice. I know, I know. <laughs> People seem to learn. So that's where we are right now. We are very, very close um, to switching over. And um, any questions? As I might mention, as George mentioned, we've spent um, a, a, a number of dollars doing this. I think it was more than we estimated in the beginning. But we've got something that's a custom system, basically based on a package that's commercially available. So I think that's a good, a good way to spend our money. And, and as uh, Don mentioned, there won't be money that we'll spend again. The, web, the cost of the actual web and member database ongoing maintenance is very little more than we're paying today. It's not, it's I don't know what that is. 150 a month or something yeah. like that. Not very, not so very well, first, Back to Jim's question. Our budget is set on covering our, our operational costs. The development of this is an investment, and fortunately, we had the surplus that couldn't afford the investment. We will be contacting you and asking you to sign in and start working with it so that we can get past this. Right now, right now Don, Don is doing double duty. When he gets an application, he's working in two different databases mm -hmm. now, and we need to, we need to get to the point where you fill in the information about your about yourself. You are responsible for telling the telling the system that your email address has changed, that you don't have, you don't send a message to Don, and then Don has to go in and, and do the stuff. So it, it, we're trying we're trying to get to a point where people who are running the club have some time to do other things. Right, and also we can fill in for each other as need be. You know, as a situation arises, we can step in and uh, we work, work with George in interfacing with Linda. Linda isn't uh, a, a setup though that has an interface for us. So we don't know what, how much we're gonna be able to automate there. Uh, we can probably automate some of the front end of it. I'm not sure what the labor savings gonna be we're assessing now. Any questions about anything else? Done. Will the website be the same as it is now? Excuse me. No. Um, when we switch over, um, at the time of the switch, we will, you will still use the same URL, but it will go to a different server. And it, the look and feel will be different. Uh, I think we have the same picture, but that might be the only thing that's the same. Yeah, but, but are you talking about also it'll have the same tabs and archives and all of that stuff that we can get now? It will have the, the index to Jerry's articles. It will have all of the class materials. It will have all of the Wednesday meeting films. That, and there'll uh, just be a new section for, yeah, for member it, well, information? Well, no, actually, or, it, it will, the total look will be different. So okay. it's not like we're adding another tab uh -huh. over here and it's going to be just for members. It, that's not it at all. It will be a totally new look. But there will be there will be links to go to George's video. So if you want if you want to see George's videos, there will be a place for the video and tap on it and get there. So if they're they're renamed tabs, but they're it's, it is it will look different. It does look different. Yeah, some things that might have been across the top of the current website will be down in the sidebar now. Um, 
So it'll be interesting. It, it, it'll all be there. You'll just have to like look Gary's and see. Doc. Pardon me? Like Gary's Dock. Gary's Dock. And Gary's my Dock. Dock. <laughs> Which is on the other side from Jerry's yeah. Dock. <laughs> but it's on the side, not on the bottom. Don? Yeah, Jerry mentioned paying with a credit card. We are not. We have opened an account with PayPal. So the payments will be through PayPal. We will not be storing anybody's credit card. Right. And from what I understand, you don't need a PayPal account. No. If no. you click on it and it says pay with PayPal, and you give them your credit card number for their one-time payment, and then they will pay us. And they charge us it's two, two or three percent, so there will be another expense, but it's a minor expense uh, considering the benefit that we get. Really reduces the bookkeeping load on Don, makes it more transferable, and uh, yes. Will you still be able to pay by check? Um, initially, yeah, but we really like to discourage that because that forces us to get back in and do it manually. I got ripped off by PayPal, so saying that I would just assume give my check. Yeah. I don't think my you you can actually pay by check to PayPal. I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to use a credit card. It doesn't give it to him. He's a treasure. But uh, initially, we will accept checks, but I can foresee a time when we will, there will be an extra fee and people pay by check in March. March. Somebody else had a question. Jim. Don, did you consider having the member pay the usage fee? No, it's such a small amount. Well, well also it's not we, worth it. We pay it out of general funds. Yeah. It's only well, going to be less than two hundred dollars a year. Okay. For the and we did we did increase the dues um, for a number of reasons, uh, and the, but it's enough to cover the fee. How much are the dues now? This meant, yes, sir. How much are the dues now? Uh, Twenty-five for an individual member and thirty-five for a family. That's two people. And that's for a year. When do you think this will take effect? Um, if it were up to me, it would be done like next week. <laughs> so, but uh, no, it's, it's we're very we're close. Home. We're very close. We've got one thing that she's working on today, and that's setting up email accounts for the board. And uh, once that's done, um, they're really, I'm not saying it's going to be a perfect implementation, but it'll be <coughs> pretty good. Yep. Will we be able to go online and see when we our dues are up? Yep. An yep. individual person. Yeah. And you and you will get a, you will get an email from the system instead of me having right. to set up. Right. Okay. The reminders will come right. automatically. Okay. Like they come, they'll come. I don't know, eight weeks, four weeks, and two weeks ahead. Okay. Yes. Yeah, once we've perfected this program, will it be? Uh, would it be valuable to other Apple user groups? And if so, is it a profit sign for us to sell? Well, no. Well, it's not something we can sell. No, I mean, okay. we we tweaked it. I, you know, I'd say it's basically a package. It the is city, a package. Sorry. The city okay. CRM I don't know you were is a package for database management, and we hmm. have some custom programming done, but not, relatively speaking, very little. So, yeah. Well, all the classes filled up. I think I missed a few. Um, she's asking about the classes being filled up, or they're not all open yet for registration. So. Yeah, let me let me make that announcement now before before we break. Uh, we will be opening up the next class probably tomorrow, sometime tomorrow. I will be sending out emails to everybody telling you that the second class, which is the, the cloud class, will be open for registration. Uh, for El Capitan, we ended up with. Uh, Oversubscription within three three days of registration. So when you get the announcement, if you're interested, I advise you not to sleep on it. Com, you've likely come to learn something. So how do you find what you're looking for? At the top of nearly every page on our site, you'll find this library menu and the navigation bar. By hovering your mouse over it, you'll find you can browse by subject in the left panel by subject topic in the middle panel, or by softwares associated with that subject on the right. For example, I can come here to the business subject, 
and choose Management to see all the courses related to business management. If you're looking for a specific software product and don't see it in one of those lists, you would go to the Featured menu and select Software. Here, you'll see a list of all the software and software publishers listed in alphabetical order. For example, under the letter A, you'll find a link to courses covering Acrobat as well as Adobe, the company that publishes Acrobat. You can either scroll the list to find what you're looking for, or select a single letter up at the top to jump to that letter's list of software and publisher. If you'd like to see a listing of all of our latest releases, you'll find them on the homepage, which you can always get to by clicking the lynda.com logo up at the top of any page. Scroll down to New Courses, and here you can view all the latest releases by clicking through this list. And if you'd like to narrow this search, just select this menu, and you can now search for new courses by subject. We also have a powerful search feature. Simply type the topic you're looking for up here in the search bar, such as Agile Management, and click the search icon and every course or video related to that topic will appear in this list. The more specific you can be with your search terms, the better results you'll get. You can also filter your search results as well. For example, if I come over here and select Courses to show just the courses that match that search rather than the individual videos, I will see fewer results populate and it will be much easier to find what I'm looking for. I can further narrow down this list by adding another filter, such as Advanced, under Skill Level. And now I'll see a list of courses aimed at viewers with more experience in Agile management. If you'd like to see results for individual videos rather than an entire course, click Videos. And now I see the names of specific videos within the resulting courses. Now let's take a look at an actual course. Let's say I'm interested in learning Adobe Dreamweaver CC. I'll go to the Library menu, and go down to Web, and navigate over to Dreamweaver. That gives me a long list of results, so I'll filter the list to just show me Dreamweaver CC courses. And now, I only have nine results. And you have the option of viewing this in either this default, detailed view, or you can switch over to the basic view. You can also sort this by clicking on this menu option and choosing release date, or course titles. You can also remove your filters by clicking on the X on the filters list under selected filters. So when you find the course that you're looking for, click the link to that course and it'll take you to the courses page. You can scroll down the page to see the table of contents in this course. If you're logged in as a member, like I am in this view, all the links will be active in this list. If you're just visiting, you'll notice that some of these links in the table of contents are active and others are not, as indicated by a gray lock icon that will appear next to the video titles. But you'll see that 10% of every course on lynda.com has content available for free. Watching these free movies will give you an idea of what the quality of our courses is like. So to watch a video, simply click on the video name in the table of contents, and now that video starts playing. Now, if you have a premium membership to lynda.com and you're logged in, you'll also have access to the exercise files for each course. Exercise files are the same files that each instructor uses in his or her respective courses. Being able to download the exercise files means that you'll be able to work alongside the videos using the exact same assets that you see on screen. We also offer closed captioning on select courses. If the course you're watching includes closed captioning, You'll see this CC icon here in the video details. You can also view the entire transcript of a movie to skim the contents to see if it contains the information you're looking for by clicking the transcript tab. Clicking on any line of text will jump you to that point in the video and begin playing. You're also able to search for text within the course by typing a word or phrase into the search this course field. Our system also tracks the videos or movies you watch so you can keep track of the courses that you've started and completed. And you can also see where you've left off so you can return to that point 
when you want to begin watching again. So there you have it, a brief overview of how our library works. Throughout the rest of this entire course, I'll be getting into more details about several of the features we just looked at, as well as many other features and components of our site. You can watch that entire thing just by going to lynda.com. It's about five or six hours <laughs> of information. But uh, she just did an overview. Uh, the exercise files are available as part of our uh, as part of our membership, and they also track by individual uh, what movie you watched and so forth. So uh, I mean, this is just a dynamite opportunity to take advantage of. Thank you.